Tasks automation, boom, Jira is back home. I have finally found the best present sensor for Home Assistant and iPhone. Not only this service doesn't share your location, but it's also free. Now, let's roll the intro. If you've only got a couple of minutes to watch this video, I'm gonna give you a quick summary of this project. Thanks to the HomeKit integration with Home Assistant, you're able to basically use the HomeKit functionality. So when people leave or when people arrive and use that to actually trigger automations in Home Assistant. Today I'm gonna to show you how this actual connection is made and how reliant it is. In a future video, I will also show you some automations that I'm actually gonna be building off of this integration. Obviously this project is iOS only and you're going to need an Apple TV or an iPad that sits at home that acts as your HomeKit hub. To actually pair these devices together is super simple. It's just basically scanning a QR code and putting a code in. If you're struggling with this, then I've made a complete dedicated video to the HomeKit integration which you'll find over here. I've tried two different ways to actually get this working. One is using an input boolean and the second one is using an input select. Now let's jump into Home Assistant. I'll show you the exact configuration that you need to get this working. The two ones that I created, you can see them over here. Now the input boolean has on or off and the input select can have different statuses. So I'm using home and away, as you can see from over here. Now my preference is to use the input select and the reason why is because it's a super clear home or away. So this person is home or away or the house is occupied empty if you want to do it at a home level. With the on and off, it's pretty much confusing because what does on mean? On means the house is occupied. So to actually add a helper, you can go to the to configuration and scroll and look at the menu because the menus are changing. This might change location, but at the moment it's over here, the version I'm running, helpers. Click on helpers and click on add helper. The two options, one is a toggle, which is basically a yes or no, a true or false boolean. And the other one is a drop down, which you can then click here. You can create a name, give it an icon. Uh, for example, MDI account is what I used. And you can have two options. So you'll just type one option, test, for example, uh, whatever, test one. So you keep adding options. You can delete them with this trash, trash bin over here. Just go OK and then click on create once you've got it done. Then you need to just search it again. So you can see I can amend these over here and we can add options. I can rename the entity ID. But once you sort of create it, you'll be able to get the entity ID. Now this is what you're going to need to add in the uh, configuration for HomeKit, which we're going to do now. So scrolling up, go to your file editor of choice or any way that you access your configuration files in Home Assistant. Go to your configuration.yaml file in here, you might already have this if you've been using HomeKit for a while, but search for where you have HomeKit. I have it over here. The way this is configured, you can include certain uh, entities or certain domains and you can exclude certain domains and entities. If you don't know what a domain is, a domain basically is everything before the dot. So in this example, a light is a domain, media underscore play is a domain, camera is a domain. Entities are the actual domains dot and whatever the actual entity is. So you can uh, configure this as you wish, really. If you don't want anything from Home Assistant to appear in HomeKit and you just want this input selector that we're actually using, then I would recommend that you add include entities. You're going to need HomeKit, so line 395, then add filter, and then add include entities. And then you can pick the name of the entity. So I've called this one uh, trigger underscore two, but obviously I'll keep only one once I've done the cleanup after this video. So you can see you can add this input select uh, and put whatever name you've uh, called it. Once that's done, save the file and then restart your home assistant configuration. Because I'm recording this on a Mac, I've got the home app installed here, but you can do this on your iPhone very, very easily. So click on the plus button, click on add automation, and then pick any one of these people arrive or people leave, whichever one you want to do first. I'm going to show you the one I set up. So when I arrive home, it, the automation is enabled and I've got arrive home as sort of the, the trigger point. And you can see the uh, accessories that I use. So you will need to click on set accessories and scenes. 
right? And then you will be able to pick whichever one you want. So i am actually got two. The way this actually works, the Boolean appears like this. You can see it flips on and flips off. And you can see that this uh, device is a flip on flip off, but there are two devices. So basically what it did was it created two different Booleans. That's how it sort of appears, uh, which is uh, slightly confusing. But basically what you need to do is you need to have home on when you arrive home and I've also put the Boolean on. So once this is done, uh, eventually we'll be testing this automation. Let's leave it as, as that. Create the when I leave home automation. So it's pretty much similar, it's just I leave home. And then this way we're turning on away. So basically we're telling it pick away and we're turning off the present sensor. So this is also done. Now jumping back on home assistant, we're gonna to need to go to our automations tab. So pick automations and scenes. Uh, and you can create new automations, create a, start, start with an empty automation. And over here, you can add the usual things. I'll show you the one I created already. So I created two geos back home, geo left the home. So let's pick the first one. I can edit with this pencil. So add this nice description, go and use state as a trigger type, pick the entity ID that you're using, uh, which is going to be your in my, the input selector, my example, the from, I'm having from away to home. So I don't want it to trigger every time the state changes. So if I'm already home uh, and, and for some reason it, it goes and tells me uh, it's home again, we don't really want to change. We only want this to change when it goes from away to home. And I've added no conditions for now. And the uh, simple message that I'm using is just basically a, a notification that I get on my phone to tell me basically that I'm back home. Why am I actually doing this? This is really to test the efficiency and at what point in the geofencing I, it gets triggered. Because the one thing that you don't have control on is the actual zone. So if you have this presence detection done with Home Assistant, you can have a radius and control the actual uh, zone or how big it, the radius is. But you sort of rely on at the mercy of uh, Apple developers and how they've implemented it and how far they deem uh, is being away from home. But it sort of works okay for me. So once you've sort of done this and you're happy with it, you can do three dots duplicate automation, change this uh, name around, change the state from home and away, so you reverse it. And then here you just change the text to left the home. I'll show you quite quickly. So yes, it's pretty much exactly the same, home and away flipped and uh, the different notification to test it. Now I'm going to go to the developer tools and I'm actually going to test this out. I'm going to demo how fast this actually is and you'll be very, very amazed. But if you're enjoying this video so far, remember to leave this a like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Cool, thanks for doing that. So let's jump into the developer tools. And they're right here with this little uh, hammer button. So go in there um, and I'm filtering by HomeKit because that's what I've called it and you can see the two uh, ones over here. So I'm gonna start screen recording my phone right now. Cool, so now this is recording. So if I go to the actual home app, and in the home app, I can actually trigger and test automation like I saw you on the Mac. So I'm gonna tap on when I leave home, and I'm gonna actually test this automation. So as soon as I tap it, we should see this triggering up to away on the screen. And now because I've got do not disturb, you don't see the notification popping up, but you can actually see while you do not disturb, Home Assistant, Geo has left the home and you can see that's pretty much imminent. Now I'm gonna remove do not disturb so it actually is even better to actually see. So when I arrive home, test this automation, boom, Geo is back home. So you saw how fast that was. Also it changed on the screen over here on the desktop. So it's super, super, super fast. I'm gonna be testing it out over the weeks. So I'll be letting you know in the comment section down below if there are any issues with this. But so far I'm super chuffed. In the next video, which I'm gonna leave over here when it's published, I will show you all of the uh, automations that I'm actually that are dri driven by the fact that uh, I'm leaving or coming back home. This is Jeff from Swanamakers. See you in that video.